Hey everyone, welcome back to another Logs AI training session. In this video, I will be breaking down alerting within the metrics portion of the platform using the Grafana Alert Manager. Now, in this use case, what I will be breaking down is how we can be notified when a pod within my Kubernetes environment exceeds a memory threshold of 80%. Now, I will be talking about contact points, notification policies, and the alert itself. So let's jump right into the platform and let's get started. So to navigate to the alert within Logs.io, what we're gonna do is go into metrics and then in the bell icon in the bottom left-hand corner, we're gonna click on alert rules. So if we take a look here, what we're gonna see is we have four essential tabs that I'm really curious about. We have alert rules, contact points, notification policies, and silences, right? So let's break these down one by one in what they do. So the alert rule is actually where we define the specific alert. In our use case, where we want to be notified when a pod exceeds a threshold of 80%, we're going to create an alert that essentially does our calculation and notifies us there. Now, our contact points are what channels or what emails we want to be notified. So if we have a Slack endpoint, an Ops Genie endpoint, Jira, um, email, so forth, we can be notified in those channels, right? And all we have to do to get started is click new contact point and we can choose our contact point type, such as Microsoft Teams, Slack, and so forth. I've already gone ahead and created one. So you can see under my Slack channel, this is where I have it provisioned, where our recipient is through a webhook URL going to my appropriate Slack channel. Above is our template, our messaging template. So this is what we're going to utilize. I will break this down further when we start to talk about the actual alert itself. But just note that the contact point is how we define where we want it to be routed. Now, the notification policy. This is also gonna be broken down further when we talk about the alert itself. But essentially, we're creating a um, logical operation that's saying, okay, if we have this label or this match, then notify the contact point. And the reason we have these is because maybe we want to route specific alerts to specific teams. For example, if we had a label on our alert that says uh, notify prod, then we want to be able to route that to the prod contact point. If we have it going to our developers, maybe we want it to go to dev um, and our label is going to be team equals dev so forth, right? So this is just a way to actually create a notification policy based on where you want the alert to go to. So this is more of a conditional. And then silences can be used if you want to maybe snooze an alert that's being triggered um, during maintenance windows, or if you're pushing out an update to a service and you want to be able to silence that alert for the time being, you can do that here. So let's go back into the alert rule and let's start kind of building out our use case and how this would look in Logs.io and in Slack. So under our services, what I did was I created a pod memory over 80% alert. If we click on edit in here, you can see that I have named this pod memory over 80% and I'm nesting it under my services folder. So what we're doing here is we're writing out a PromQL query, which I will create a further video on breaking down Prometheus um, queries and PromQL specifically. But essentially what we're doing here is we're doing a simple mathematical calculation to calculate percentages. So we're saying, let's group by the pod in the namespace under this metric, and then let's divide it by the total container resource limits and then multiply it by 100 to get a percentage value. The only reason I'm not covering this right now is because it's not super important important at the ex this exact moment. I'm just trying to explain a basic use case. So you can see here, if we run this query, we will get all of our um, pods and namespaces and as sp specifically what that memory um, utilization limit is. So right now we can see, for example, this open telemetry demo email service is at a 92%. And that would be exceeding the threshold that we want. We're searching over a certain time frame, And that is our query A. Now, query B essentially is looking over a specific time frame and aggregating all those values and then placing it under one value. So if we look at our stat, for example, and we switch this from table to stat, you'll see that we have 52, 42, 62, so forth. These are the um, essentially A queries that we've generated um, per pod and namespace, right? Because that's what we're grouping by. We're grouping by the pod and the namespace and we're taking it and lumping it under one metric, 
which is our value or our pod memory. Next in the C, we're creating our math expression, which is our logical operator where we wanna be alerted. So like I said, B will give us a metric for every pod memory. And what I wanna do is notify when it's greater than 80%, right? So essentially what I'm doing is I'm referencing B, and then I'm saying when this is greater than 80%, give me a stat metric. And I'm saying when it's zero, that means I'm not gonna be alerted. When it's one, I'm going to be alerted, right? So if I run these queries, you can see that this would update in real time, but essentially whenever it's one, I'm gonna be alerted on these, zero, I'm not. Now my alert condition is gonna be saying, um, let's notify based on C because that's our threshold, right? When it's over 80%, I wanna be notified on this. And I wanna set an evaluation period of one minute for every three minutes. So I wanna evaluate this on a three minute interval basis. And I wanna say, okay, if it's exceeding this threshold for a minute, for three minutes, then notify me. We can preview these alerts specifically. And you can see here that we'll be able to see the state. So some are in normal, some are in alerting and so forth. Then we get down to step four, which is going to be the details of our alert, which funnels through into Slack. So you can see here that if we take this info from our preview alert and we throw it into an editor, for example, you're gonna see there's a labels object and then we have some information that funnels through. So if we look here, we're referencing our labels.pod. So labels.pod is going to be open telemetry demo fraud detection service, so forth. That's gonna be the pod I'm notified on. And then I'm saying this is in the namespace default, which comes through in our labels. And then I'm actually printing out the values or values.b.value, which is going to say, okay, where's our var b, our labels.value right here. So this is gonna give me 86.4%. Reason being, I'm only ex or outputting one floating point value, which is the 0.1. So I'm getting 86.4. And then I wanna give a summary. So I'm gonna say the following pods are experiencing high memory over 80%. Please investigate ASAP to avoid out of memory. So this is gonna come through our alert, but we still haven't answered the question, how do we send this to a specific contact point, meaning Slack? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click, uh, or create a label in my alert called send equals true and severity critical. These are important to note because if we cancel out of this and go into our notification policy, you're gonna see send equals true is going to our Slack logs channel. So when our alert has that label and it comes through, it's gonna say, okay, we've interpreted that there's a label send equals true, route it to this contact point. And as we know, our contact point is through Slack, our Slack channel, and then we're sending this message template. So in our Slack channel, if we edit the contact point and go under optional Slack settings, you're gonna see that we have a title template we call, which is slack.title, and then we have a body, which is template message. So if we then go into our contact points message templates, we can see where we actually define these templates. For example, if we're looking at the slack.title template, what we're really saying is, okay, if there's a label that comes through in my alert that has severity, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring it all to uppercase, right? And then we're gonna say, okay, if the status is firing, meaning the alert is triggering, then we're going to call this template emojis above. What this does is we're gonna say, okay, if this common label severity is critical, which is what we set in our alert, if you remember, then we're gonna output the fire emoji. And that's just kind of for visual representation. And then we're also gonna output our alert name, which comes under our common labels. Now, since we have our title defined, what we're really going to do is look at the message because I believe that's what's most important when it comes to what's actually being outputted, right? So what we're going to say is we're going to define this Slack message or define this message template using this curly bracket syntax. And then we're going to say, okay, if the amount of alerts firing is greater than or GT zero, then we're going to output the summary. But as you remember, if we looked at the alert, my summary was... Um, the following pods are exceeding a threshold of 80%. Please investigate ASAP to avoid out of memory. But the problem is, since this will be triggering for every single alert, meaning if there is, let's say, 10 alerts, we're going to get the same summary 10 times. So what I'm really doing here is I'm saying only give me 
the zero uh, or the first alert essentially um, of that, or give me that summary for the first alert. And the reason I want that is I don't want this output at 10 times, right? So I only want it once. And then I want to know, okay, for all the firing alerts, let's loop over these alerts that are firing. And then let's output the descriptions um, that is defined in my annotations, as well as the Grafana dashboard label and the service dashboard label. And essentially what this is doing is it's creating a hyperlink. Service overview is going to be the text, but the annotation service dashboard is going to be the actual hyperlink. And then we have the same thing for when the uh, the pod is resolved. So let's say we have a pod fraud uh, detection that is over 80%, and then it drops below 70% in the next evaluation period. We're going to get a resolved alert that's saying, okay, this was above 80%, now it's below, so we're all set, right? And then once this actually triggers, so if we go back into our alert rule under pod memory over 80%, we're going to see that all these are firing. Now, what does this look like in Slack? If we go into our channel where it's being routed, we're gonna see the pod memory over 80% where we output our summary only for the first alert, right? And then we're saying, okay, there's six firing, give me all of these that are firing. So we have the open telemetry demo fraud detection service. And then we're saying in the default namespace, like we have in our labels in what the actual uh, pod memory utilization is. So 86%, 99, 95. And based on these, I can determine which one I need to approach first. So for example, 99.9% .9 is really, really high. We're about to be maxed out and we're probably gonna run into out of memory issues if we do not address this urgently. So that's the first one I can take a look at. Now we can see here, metrics and service overview are not defined, right? So why aren't these being defined? And if we go back into our alert, you can see it's because we did not create those annotations for those specific labels that we have within our um, message template. So in order for us to do that, what we need to do is we need to create a Grafana dashboard. And then what we would also have to do is create a service overview. Because if you remember, if I duplicate this tab here, and we go back into our contact points template, you can see we have our Grafana dashboard and service dashboard. So what I would need to do is I would need to create a link to these and specifically how I would do this is I would go into our Grafana dashboard and what I can do is click on the logs.io dashboards, for example, go to our pod stats dashboard. And then let's say I have a specific um, a specific value that I want to funnel through, what I'll do is I'll go into the Grafana dashboard and then I can start to actually template this. So let's say I wanted to link directly to this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to determine, okay, which namespace is this under? And if you remember, we pull our namespace dynamically up here. So let's replace this var namespace with our value that we're getting through the alert. Same with the pod because I want this to be dynamic, right? I want this to funnel through when the pod changes and it's a different value. I don't want it to be static. So now what I'm doing is I'm replacing this value and then I can go into my service overview if I need to, which is in the tracing portion. And then I can go in here, pop in that link. And now these will be generated as expected. So the next time this alert actually triggers, what we're gonna actually do is get the correct values coming in for these hyperlinks. Now, as I mentioned, what we are going to talk about in a future session is Prometheus queries, specifically PromQL, and how we actually create these. In the meantime, if you are curious about how you can easily just pull a query and use it in an alert, what you can actually do is go into a dashboard specifically Let's say we want to check out the pod stats and we want to be notified on CPU utilization. What you can actually do is pull this alert directly or this query directly and create an alert like I did with the memory utilization. As always, if you do have questions on how to create a query or any problems with alerts, please reach out to support and we will assist you further. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next session, everyone.